Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to the Daily Dynamite of Church of Nigeria and Communion. Today being Thursday, 15th February 2024. The topic before us says consequences of sin. And our text is in Psalm chapter 52, we read from verse 1 to 9. But before then, let us pray. Father of heaven, we are happy to be alive this morning. Thank you for another privilege to gather in your name. Holy Spirit divine, help us this morning. Speak your word in our hearts. Help us, O oh God, to live for you and for you alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, turn your Bible with me to Psalms number chapter 52 from verse 1. Why boasted thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue devised mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Thou lovest all the very worlds, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made... So I will take that verse seven again. Lo, this is the man that made not God the strange, but trusted in the abundance of his wishes, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Verse 9 and the last. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. We we'll take the anchor verse in verse 4 and 5. I will read it again, verse 4. Thou lovest all the very words, O thou deceitful tongue. Verse 5. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall, make, he shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today we are considering a very much important topic in a time like this. It's a very difficult topic in a time like this. Consequences of sin. You may ask this question. The sin has consequences. Is there any penalty for sin? Sin indeed is a canker worm. Sin has horrible consequences in the life of a sinner. So disastrous. Look at the word sin. Simply put, disobedience to God's ordinance. That is what the word of God. And here, whenever we talk about sin, at times our attention, our focus lies only on maybe fornication, maybe
maybe stealing, maybe fighting, maybe kidnapping, and other things with less attention to those little foxes. Those little foxes. The spoils the buy. Child of God, I want to tell us this money for every action. There is a consequence. Anything done on under the planet Earth as a youth, as a young girl, as a young boy, there is always a consequence. In our uncle verse, draw more attention to the issue of uh, the economic. How do we handle our tanks? What do we use our tongues to do? Many have used their tongues to real men, to real many youths into destruction. As a youth, a young boy, a young girl, what do you use of tongue to do? He said, Thou lovest all devouring words. You have used your words to devour many. As a young lady, you have used your words, your enticing words, to lead many into sin. Sin of fornication. As a young man, you have used your tongue, your voice, to warn many young ladies out there into fornication. There is consequences for us. There are consequences for sin. For God shall be every walk in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 14, Bible says then, For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. In other words, every action, the one spoken, those who are done in secrets, all must be brought to judgment. So as a young girl, young boy out there, mind the way you live your life. Mind your lifestyle. Mind your way of this. There are consequences. So from this scripture, we saw in verse 5, various consequences of sin applying in verse 5. And because of time, we are going to take them one after the other. Number one, in that chapter five, that we say, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. God didn't say destroy for some time, for a season. He says forever. What does it mean to destroy or destruction? One, to abandon the world, repair or use. To neutralize, to put down completely, to severely destroy the well being of a person, and again to defeat destruction. No one, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23a, for the wages of sin is death. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, the first. Uh, Right there, he says, The soul that sinneth shall die. Destruction, that is death. Number two of that place, He, that is God, shall take thee away. Another consequences. What does he need to take away to remove? Out 
is a position to take someone away is to move someone away from his position, from his placement, from his mandate. So as we saw in Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. But we say, therefore, the Lord God sent him, who? Adam and his wife, out of the garden of Eden. We know this story so much. The garden of Eden happens to be the position, the possession, the place of affluence, the place of authority for Adam and his family. But they lost that position because of sin, sin of disobedience. So when God says he will take away, it means that he is going to do what? To remove you from that authority, from that place where he has placed you as a youth. There is a mandate given to you, given to us. As a youth, do you know that your lifestyle your loneliness, your sin can let God take you away from the original plan, from the plan and purpose He has for you. I pray for you and say, Youth, may that never be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, in that place, He said, I'll pluck thee out of thy dwelling place. Pluck. What you pluck? is used something that is useless something that is worthless something that is valueless and what does it mean to pluck something out to pull something away to take or remove quickly from a particular place or situation to be rejected after failing in a garden when we plant vegetables Maybe among them, saw weeds or unwanted plants. What the farmer does is to do what? To quickly remove the unwanted plants. So when God says he's going to pluck out, what he's saying is total rejection, total removal. Realize that we have destiny, we have a mandate from God, from heaven. And when I do tell young boys and girls out there, is that their destiny is like a raw egg. But worse broken, we amount to nothing. Consequences of sin. Sin can make war lose his or her position in life. Why are you to listen? Oh, my goodness, it's not good. You want to have it this way, you want to have it that way, and you don't care how. You want it to happen, you don't care the aftermath of it. You don't care what it will result at. All you need is a quick money. All you desire is to make it alive. All you desire is to have it. I will have this language, this lands. Use what you have to gain what you don't have. Young lady. Use what you have to achieve what you don't have. I want to tell you this morning that that statement is from the pit of hell. You want to sell your body because of money, because of phone, because you want to make it. You want to join cult. The reason why you join cultist is because of protection. There is a consequence.
seeing is so disastrous. Young man, young woman, your way out is Jesus. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. God is interested. Jesus loves you. He wants you to come. Say, come to me. Oh, the man, have the loving. I will give you rest. What are those things on you on my age? Will you continue to live in sin? for God. Say what to say because it has consequences. These consequences is so disastrous. May God help us. May God help us. We are in this season. Look into your life. What are those areas that you need to back up? Because of Jesus. Do it. And the Lord will help us. And God will bless you. Let us pray. I don't know, maybe you are touched by this message this morning. You are saying, Jesus, come into my life. I have discovered that saying has consequences in my life. Can you say, Lord, have mercy? to pray for you. Father, thank you for your children, the youths out there. As many that are making up their minds this day to follow you, to serve you. May we draw them closer to you. Lord, may we confess their sins, their faults. It's my prayer that you will forgive them. Lord, we restore them again. They have lost that position like Saul. They have lost that position like Adam. Lord, we pray you will restore them again. Thank you, Father. Lord, inspire your word in their lives. And cause them to serve you more and more. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamite.